Hi, I'm Andy Pogue from the Spencer Hill Church of Christ. I want to talk to you about uh, change of commitment. Change is never um, easy, uh, whether it is for the good, maybe we change uh, to a new job that's better, maybe we uh, go to a different school to, to complete our education, uh, or maybe it changes is painful, um, divorce, a death, uh, loss of a job, those sorts of things. But no matter what it is, a change can be uncomfortable. It's hard for humans to do that. We're, we're creatures of habit and we, we just sort of like things to go along the way they've always been. And uh, certainly in the last few months, we've had to change some things. We're changing how we, how we worship. Now we're meeting at homes and uh, very soon we'll be uh, meeting together again, but there'll be some changes. There'll be some things that we have to do that, that are going to be different. And so when we think about, about changes, and uh, those, those can be uh, good or bad, but uh, certainly there are things that are, are difficult. Uh, when, when I think about change, I thought about three examples that you'll know about uh, from the Bible. And uh, let's, let's begin by, by looking at those. First of all, there is, is Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, uh, we read that God comes to Abraham and he said, I want you to, to get out of the land where you are. Uh, get up and go. And you'll go to a place that you don't really know. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you where you're going. I'm just going to tell you to go. And, and we'll, you know, that will be unfolded as you, as you go along. Now, now think about that. Think about the challenge of that. If you and I are going to visit somewhere, um, uh, even for a short time, we have the luxury of knowing, but we can look up pictures of it and, and watch videos and we can figure out all the things that are there. We know what the language is going to be, this and that. Abraham had no idea. He didn't know where he was going, didn't know how far he was going. He only knew that he had to leave the comfort of, of his home and his life because God was calling him to do something different, to go somewhere else. And, and, uh, but, he, but he promised him some very wonderful things. He promised him that, that he would, his name would be great, uh, that he would have descendants so numerous that you couldn't count them, and that all nations of the earth would be blessed through him. And I'm sure that Abraham has to, in his mind, in some way, weigh those options. And he decides that it's worth it. I'll follow God and I'll do that. And because of that, he's called the father of the faithful. He's listed several times as a, as a faithful person because he was willing to, to accept this change challenge that, that God gave to him. Um, and, and that's a wonderful example for us as well. Uh, the second example comes from Luke chapter one. And there's a young woman named Mary who is approached by the angel Gabriel, who tells her that she's going to have a child. And of course, um, she has the, the normal human reaction. How can this be? I, I don't know a man. I'm, I've not been with a man. She's engaged to, to Joseph. but uh, we, And we see that the, the challenge that that must have been because here the angel tells her that she's going to be given a very special opportunity, but man, what a change. There's the change of... of going from, from being a, 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 an engaged woman to a mother. There is the, the change that's going to come about in her relationship with others, because I, I'm sure that that affected her reputation and how people treated her. Certainly, Joseph in the beginning thinks that, um, that she has done something wrong. And while he's willing to put her away privately, he, he still, she's lost that respect that he had for her. And so there are quite a few changes that, that come along. But she accepts the, the challenge to change. She does that. And because of that, of course, she is uh, blessed and, and, and God speaks so highly of her. And we still think 
highly of her today because of, of what she was willing to do. And then the third challenge to change really has a different outcome than Mary or Abraham, and it comes from Matthew chapter 19. And we call this story here, the rich young ruler. And we know that there is a young man who comes to Jesus and he said, you know, what do I need to do to have eternal life? Ask the right questions. And of course, Jesus first tells him to keep the law, the old law, the law of Moses that he was living under. And he replies that I've done all of those things. I've honored my father and mother. And I, I, I've, I've done all of those things uh, according to the law of Moses. I've, I've done that from my youth up. Well, Jesus challenges him to change, doesn't he? Because he said, well, if you want to have eternal life, here's what you need to do. Sell what you have, give it to the poor and come and follow me. Of course, the Bible tells us that he goes away sorrowful because he has great possessions. Can I, can I just throw this in though? Think about this. There were times that people offered to follow Jesus. And I think particularly about the young man who's, uh, or the man who has a demon cast out and he wants to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, no, you, you go back to your family. But for this rich young ruler that we read about in Matthew 19, Jesus said, come and follow me. Uh, the very same thing that he said to Peter, Andrew, James, John, to, to, the, to the disciples. Was Jesus saying, you can be one of my inner circle? I think, that's, I think that's what he offers this man, that he could have been one of these close followers. He could have seen all of the wonderful things that, that happen around Jesus. He, he could have been part of that. And, and yet he turns it down. I mean, if he had accepted this challenge, would, be, would, would we know his name and would we be reading books that he had written, gospels that he had written, or letters that he had written to churches that he had started? Well, we don't know. Because this man was not willing to accept the challenge to change. He, he wanted to stay just like he was. He wanted to keep what he had. What Jesus said was, you've got to change from your be, being secure in the law, in the old law, um, and, and all of the trappings that went with it. And now you've got to be secure by following me. He had great wealth, and that was part of his security. He, he had to give up his security to do that, both the law and, and his possessions. And, and he doesn't do that. He's not willing to do that. He, he falls away. Um, and, and so we see that he was unwilling to make the change. The, the pain of change was too great for him. Well, those are great stories, and, and we learn a lot of good lessons from, from them. Uh, Abraham's a great example. Mary's a great example. And uh, I heard someone say one time that everybody's good for something, if nothing but a bad example. And of course, the rich young ruler was, was a bad example. But what does that mean to us? Well, you know, I want to offer to us a challenge to, to change. We're about to get back into worship as we uh, were accustomed to. We're about to do that again. But there are going to be changes, as, as I mentioned. But could there be even greater changes in store for us? And so let me challenge you this, what if your faith was not just a part of your life? What if your faith was your life? What if everything you did, thought, said, what, what if all of that was based on the fact that you had committed your life to Christ? And now you may be challenged to say, or uh, you may be tempted to say rather, well, uh, you know what, I've done that. I, I've been a Christian for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Well, it is possible to have been baptized, but never have made the commitment that we see in Abraham and in Mary and the commitment that this rich ruler was not willing to make. You see, when it came to his decision, he was willing to do certain things, but there was a cutoff. I'm not going to give up my stuff. That's what he says. 
he goes away sorrowful because he had he had much possessions. What if our faith was our life and not just a part of our life? You see, it's very easy for a Christian to get into the to the routine of going to worship weekly, maybe twice a week, maybe three times a week, Bible study and 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 to worship three times a week or, or going to Bible school and, and VBS and, and meetings and such, but never really make the commitment to, to give your life in a, in a complete way to Christ. You'll give him a little part of it. You're willing to give up three hours a week, but are you really willing to give up your life? What's the difference between someone who is willing to give up part of their life versus their life? And that's what Jesus is talking about when he said, to, if you're going to follow me, you got to take up your cross and follow me. And it's a total commitment. That's what he calls on us to do. What would our lives look like if we made a total commitment to him? Would, would we have time, have trouble finding time to study his word? Or would that be something that was a priority for us? What about worship? Would, would we would we make excuses to, to not be together with saints and worship when that's possible again? Or uh, what, what about our giving? What would our giving look like if our life was totally committed to him? Would it be the leftovers? Would we say, what is the minimum that I can do and, and still be pleasing to God and I, and I would try to do that? Or would I try to be generous in all that I do? What if a congregation was full of committed people? What would that look like? Well, I think that we would see attendance would be much higher because people would want to be there. I think people would invite their friends because they understand that how important that is, that people hear the gospel and they would want to share that. Contribution would go up as we talk about. What would our singing sound like? How much more enthusiastic would it be if it was a whole congregation of people whose lives were, were committed to Christ and, and, and they wanted to praise him at the very best that they could? What would our prayer life be like? What, what would our, our outreach to, to those in the community who are lost or hurting be like? If our lives were committed to Christ, I think we can see the difference. And I think deep down we know the difference in our lives. It's very easy sometimes to, to get into that rut of, I'm so busy and I have so many commitments and I have so many things to do, so many things that take my time and take my energy and take my, my thoughts and, and I can give God just this much. I can carve out this much time for the Lord but a total commitment. You think about Abraham leaving his family, never knowing if he's going to see them again, but he accepts that challenge. You think about Mary, who, who's going to, her life is going to be upended. Uh, I mean, she is going to be uh, ridiculed by her uh, society. Uh, she's going to have the responsibility of, of a, of a child, she's got to explain this to Joseph, all of these things, but, but she accepts that challenge because she follows God. She loves the Lord and that's what she wants to do. And because of that, she's privileged to be the mother of the savior of, of mankind. Or would our lives be more in tune with the rich young man who goes away sorrowful because he's not willing to make a total commitment? Well, let's end with this thought. If our lives were totally committed to the Lord, if we accept that challenge, when we read God's word and we see that, that our lives are not in harmony with it, maybe our speech, uh, maybe the things that we do, and we see that they're not in harmony with God's word, would we be willing to, to change? Of course we would. We'd accept that challenge. We, we'd want to be more like the Lord would have us to be. What, what if it came to our salvation and, and we said, you know what? I've been trusting that, that what I did 
is, is enough or what I believe is enough. And we open God's word and it says that yes, you have to believe, but you also have to repent of your sins and confess him as savior. You have to be baptized for the remission of sins. Would, would a total committed life accept that as face value? That's what it says to do and that's what I'm going to do. Or if we try to parse those words or say, you know what, that's not really what that means. Is it, is it, is it really a committed life if we're willing to do that? I think back of those fishermen and the tax collectors and the zealot and all of those men that Jesus called and said, come follow me. And they left their nets and they, and they gave, gave Jesus their all. And that's what he calls for us to do. If you're not a Christian, you, you need to be. You need to be baptized in the name of, of, of Jesus for the remission of sins by his authority. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. If you haven't done that, make that commitment. If you've done that, but your life really hasn't, really hasn't been a committed life, you have the opportunity to change. You can ask God to forgive you and you can really commit your life. You can accept the challenge of commitment to the Lord. And I hope you'll do that. If we can help, you let us know. Thank you for listening.